One of the first casualties of the War of Independence was Crispus Attucks, a black merchant seaman killed in the Boston Massacre of 1770. Slaves and free black men fought together in the Continental Army, but after the Revolution, African Americans were largely barred from serving. Some ignored the ban and fought valiantly in the War of 1812. Among the most famous black units of the Civil War was the 54th Massachusetts Regiment, whose heroic assault on Fort Wagner in South Carolina became legendary for the display of bravery against all odds. Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation prompted thousands of freed and escaped slaves to fight in the Union Army and Navy. Their brave efforts helped to defeat slavery and gain the vote for African Americans. After the war, the Army maintained a number of black units. In the West, they helped preserve order on the lawless frontier. Native Americans called them Buffalo Soldiers. Among their feats in the Spanish-American War, the all-black 10th Cavalry Regiment assaulted San Juan Hill. With America's entry into the First World War, heroic units of black soldiers included the 369th Infantry Regiment. Known as the Harlem Hellfighters, they served on the front lines longer than any other American unit. During the bombing of Pearl Harbor, Dory Miller, an African-American Navy steward, manned a machine gun to shoot down Japanese Zeros. African-Americans continued to serve heroically during World War II, although in segregated units. Nonetheless, the barriers were slowly being broken. Black women were now able to enlist in the armed forces, and the number of black officers was increasing dramatically. Benjamin O. Davis Sr. had become the country's first African-American general in 1940. His son, future Air Force General Benjamin O. Davis Jr., commanded the 332nd Fighter Group, also known as the Tuskegee Airmen. Their outstanding performance helped to bring an end to segregation in the military. In 1948, President Truman issued an executive order directing the military to give all soldiers equal treatment and opportunity. There is no justifiable reason for discrimination because of ancestry or religion or race or color. By 1954, the Army had become the first major U.S. institution to integrate. A decade later, during the Vietnam War, blacks and whites made up an integrated fighting force. Joe Wynn is a veteran of the Vietnam era. Joe remembers the early 1970s as a time of challenge and change. I would have to say there was racial tension, not only in Vietnam, but uh, in many of the bases stateside as well. We wanted more civil rights, uh, fair and equal opportunities. Same type of uh, individuals who are challenging you at home are challenging you in the military. After Vietnam, black men and women volunteered in large numbers, and African Americans were rising in the ranks. Samuel Gravely, first African American admiral in the U.S. Navy, Frank E. Peterson, Jr., first African-American general in the Marines. Hazel Johnson Brown, first African-American female general in the U.S. Army. General Colin Powell's appointment as chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff marked a high point in an extraordinary legacy of service. In Operation Desert Storm, he led U.S. Armed Forces to one of the most impressive victories in military history. Today, African Americans continue to reach for new heights, like Captain Vernice Armour, who served in Operation Iraqi Freedom and became the first African American female combat pilot. My dad was in the military, my grandfather was in the military. I'm also standing on very, very strong shoulders from the people that came before me, black female pilots, the Tuskegee Airmen, you know, General Peterson, first black aviator in the Marine Corps. African Americans have valiantly answered the call to defend our country time and again.